Praise God. So the topic of today's message is don't limit God, trust God. Hallelujah. And you know, when you put a limit on something, you, you stop it, don't you? You know, you, you push it down or you prevent it from being able to do even more than what it can actually potentially do. But this morning, God is calling us. Don't limit him. God is greater and bigger than anything that you can think. Yeah, and even if you don't know who God is or you haven't got relationship with God, God is still big and God is still good and God is still real. Amen? Amen. So don't limit God, trust God. We're going to look at a story about a gentleman called Lazarus. And Lazarus was in the Bible. His name means whom God helps. That's what Lazarus' name means, whom God helps. So we're going to look at John chapter 11, and we're going to stay in that chapter today. So it says, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So we have the introduction then. Lazarus was ill. He wasn't well at all. And this word sick, it actually means he was feeble. He was without strength. He was powerless. You know, you know what it's like when you don't feel well. You know, if you're anything like me, when I don't feel well, I am very sorrowful for myself. I'm always looking for somebody to help me. Oh gosh, it's like going up the stairs, it's like climbing a mountain. You know, my head feels like it's gonna explode. But you know something? God is a healer. Amen? God is a healer. But this occasion, Lazarus was sick. So the Bible says, as it continues, his sisters, Mary and Martha, sent unto him, which is Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So Mary and Martha and Lazarus had this special relationship with Jesus. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus loved them. They were good friends. So as you can see here, Mary and Martha, they sent to him, they sent to Jesus, and what they said was, he whom thou lovest is sick. They didn't say, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. They said, he whom thou lovest is sick. And what that shows is that God knows Lazarus so well that they didn't need to tell him who it was. The one who you love is sick. Jesus knew who it was. So, you know, when we go to prayer, we don't have to be saying, or like say for myself, I wouldn't have to say, Lord, I am Julie, and I'm sick. I am Julie, and my situation is bad. I am Julie, please remember such and such, because God knows who I am, and God knows all of us. He knows us by name, by nature. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen? So the one to go to in your time of need is God. But what God is telling us today is don't limit him, because he can do more than you imagine when you go to him. So we're going to continue then. And that verse, as they're calling out to send to Jesus, what it also shows is that they had a certain faith, knowing that Jesus is going to do something. You know, when you go to the doctors, I'm sure all of you who has been to the doctors, you're not just going because it's a doctor. You're expecting the doctor to do something. Is that right? Otherwise, why are you going to go to the doctor? So the fact that Mary and Martha called Lazarus, they knew that, called Jesus for Lazarus, they knew that Jesus must be able to do something. And the fact is at this point, the Bible says that Lazarus was sick. So therefore, he was still alive. There was a glimmer of hope. Amen? There's some situations that we are in and have that are really, really bad, but there is a glimmer of hope. Amen? There's a glimmer, a little glimmer of hope. And this was Mary and Martha's situation. He's sick, Lord, but come, there's a glimmer of hope. Praise God. Verse 4. But this is the response that they get from this person who they believe would help and can help. Jesus heard and he said, this sickness, this thing that Lazarus is going through is not unto death. He's not going to die. But there is a purpose for this sickness. And the purpose, it says, it's for the glory of God and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So this word glory is the Greek word doxa. So doxa means a thing that belongs to God. And it also means honor and praise and worship. So what Jesus was saying is that this situation that this man, my friend Lazarus, is going through, it's so that 
the God that we serve is going to receive the glory and the honor and the praise that belongs only to him. Amen. It's not going to be for anybody else's glory. It's for God's alone. And furthermore, that the Son of God, who is Jesus, might also receive the glory that is due unto his name. Praise God. So sometimes we go through these awful circumstances. and They're not nice. We go through trials that are not nice, but there is a purpose and there is a reason. And it's that the Lord, our God, will receive the glory. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So then... Everything we go through has a bigger purpose that brings glory to God's name in the midst of our deliverance. And I know it's tough because when you're in the middle of it, it doesn't feel good. You want God to come now while there is a glimmer of hope. But Jesus knows something that we don't know. And Jesus knew something that Mary and Martha didn't understand, couldn't understand what was going on. But in between... Jesus decides, you know what, I'm not going to go yet. I'm going to go to Judea. Now, Judea in that town was a place where the people didn't like Jesus. The disciples knew that if Jesus went to Judea, they might attack him again. We're going to go to verse 11 now. Jesus then says these words to the disciples. He says, these things said he. And after that, he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. In other words, he's actually died. He's gone. And he says, but I'm going to go that I may awake him out of sleep. So now, this glimmer of hope, and he was alive and sick. And they said, come Jesus, we need you now. You can imagine, it's gone. He's, he's passed away. He's, he's gone to, to, to sleep, as Jesus says. So the disciples start to think, well, what do you mean he's sleeping? Verse 12, praise God. The disciples then said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he shall do well. In other words, you know that when you're poorly and you have a sleep, they're the same. Let him rest then. That's a good thing. Let him sleep and get his strength back. But that's not what Jesus was saying. They didn't understand. How be Jesus spake of his death? But they thought that he had spoke of him taking a rest in sleep, that he's sleeping. Praise God. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Let's, let's just tell you straight and forth. You're not understanding what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to tell you plain. Lazarus is gone. He's dead. What a news to receive. Praise God. And verse 15. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So what Jesus is saying is that, you know something? I'm glad that he died when we weren't there. Because if he had died... When we were there, you might not have understood what I'm going to do. You may feel desperately sad and be mourning. But also, Jesus was saying that he's going to take their faith to a different level. Okay? At this time, Jesus was still on the earth. But we know the Easter story that Jesus had to die on the cross and rise again. But when Jesus was going to leave the earth, he knew that these disciples were going to have to do a work whilst he's not here. So they're going to need to raise their faith, praise God. And it's just like us in our circumstances. When we limit God, we prevent him from doing the greater things that he can do in our lives. Hallelujah. So therefore, Jesus has to show us sometimes by taking us through difficult circumstances who he is so that our faith can be raised. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus was moving in what we call kairos time kairos is a greek word and what kairos means it's divine time we right now here are in what we call chronos time chronos time chronos time is we know the minutes the seconds the hours we know after church we're going to go and make our plans to go and eat or go and fellowship with your friends and family in three years time you may have had your plan set what you would like to do but the thing with god is that he is all-powerful and all-knowing. And he will interrupt our chronos time with his kairos time in order to bring about deliverance. Amen? And this is what was happening in Lazarus' situation. Chronos time, Lazarus has gone. He's died. He's gone. But Jesus' kairos time, he was coming to bring about something powerful. Amen? 
he's going to bring something mighty in the lives of Mary and Martha. But he wanted them not to limit their trust in God and not to limit God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What circumstances, my fellow brothers, sisters, um, gentlemen and ladies, children, what circumstances are you facing? That's difficult. That's hard. That's, that's trying your life right now. Don't limit God. Don't give up on it because there is a greater thing that God is going to do. Amen. God is stepping into Kairos time for your life. Then verse 17, when Jesus came, so he went now, he went back to Lazarus' town. He got to Lazarus, where Lazarus was. And he found that Lazarus had lain in the grave four days already. How many days? Four days. So Lazarus had been dead four days. So in between, when they'd sent message, he was sick but still alive. But now he'd been dead for four days. Praise God. We're going to read from verse 18 to verse 20. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. So a few miles, basically. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother because their brother had died. So they want to comfort them. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went on her way and met him. But Mary, her sister, was at home. She was at the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. So what Martha was saying here is she was almost telling Jesus off. Why have you come now for it's too late? If you'd have come when my brother was alive, he wouldn't have died. How many of our situations, you've gone through these circumstances. Why hasn't God stepped in? Why hasn't God turned this around? Why am I still in this situation? Why am I sick? Why is my family member going through that problem? Where is God? Where are you? That's what Martha was saying. And also on top of that, the thing is here, don't miss this, is that Martha was demonstrating her limited faith, her limit on God, because she said to him, if you had been here. So she believed that if he had been here, the brother wouldn't die. So she trusted. She knew Jesus could do something. But also she was demonstrating that he's gone now. So why, is, what, why are you bothering to come? But God is saying, don't limit me. God is bigger. <laughs> God is bigger. Amen. Is God bigger than your situation? He is. I'm telling you, he really is. Then she says, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. So she, she knew he could do something. Then Jesus said unto her, thou brother, thy brother shall rise again. What a hope. The brother had died. And Jesus, recognizing Martha was panicking because she was scared. She was panicking. Yeah. But he said to her, your brother shall rise again. What a promise. What a promise. And verse 24, Martha then says to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So what she was saying is, you're right, actually. I know I'll see him again. But it's going to be in the resurrection. In those times before Jesus died, the Jews did believe in the resurrection. Brethren. They knew that we were going to rise again. But she didn't understand truly what Jesus was saying. She just thought he was offering, do you know those words of comfort we offer one with another? It's going to be okay. You'll get through this. But Jesus wasn't saying that. There was a truth behind what Jesus was saying. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. What I want to share with us today is a bit of a revelation of these words. Because there is a short word in this sentence that is so powerful. And it's the word of the, T-H-E. The is what's called in our English grammar a definite article that means it is used before the noun to indicate or show the identity of the noun is known to the reader. So what does that mean? This Bible here, okay, we all, you can all see the Bible? Yes, you all see the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. So if I said to any one of you, go and pick up a Bible, all of you will probably look around thinking, which Bible am I talking about? Wouldn't you? If I said, you go and pick up a Bible, which Bible would you pick up? But if I said to you, come and pick up 
the Bible. There's only one Bible I'm talking about. It's this one because yes, I've said the Bible. I've identified to you which Bible I mean. Do you understand? Yeah? So that's the definite article. You know what I'm talking about. So when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, he said it so quickly. What he was saying is, I am the resurrection and I am the life. There's one thing, and it is me. He's saying, Martha, that resurrection that you said I will see Lazarus in. I am the resurrection. It is me. When he's talking, she's talking about life. You know, he's gone. He's, he's, he's died. Jesus is saying, I am the life. The hope that you need in the circumstances that you face, even right now. You might not have a, a physical thing that's died, but circumstances in your life that you think, oh gosh, forget it. There's no way back from that. There's no way back in that relationship. There's no way back in that job. My, my school works too hard. I can't be bothered to, to understand what my teacher's saying. It's gone. Jesus is saying, I am the solution. It's me. Jesus is the answer for the world today, but he is the, the only one. He said to Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And therefore, he that believes in me, because I am the resurrection, because I am the life, praise God, you, you shall live and not die. He said, and whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. And what he means by that, of course, as human beings, we're going to pass away. But what he's talking about here is eternally, there's a spiritual death. Because you see, brethren, there is an eternity to live, okay? We're either going to live in eternity with the Father, or we're going to live in eternity in hell. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Praise God. But what our aim is, if we have our faith in Jesus, is eternity in heaven with him. Amen? That is the hope. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he said to Martha, believe thou this. Do you believe I am the resurrection? Do you believe I am the life? Do you believe that if you believe in me, you shall live again? So Martha says, well, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Have you noticed she did not address anything that he said? She didn't address the fact that he said I'm the resurrection. She did not address the fact that he said I am the life. She said, I believe you are Christ, which is true. I believe you are the Son of God, true, which should come into the world. In other words, Jesus' revelation went whoosh, over her head. No understanding. And can you blame her? Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Her mind must have been blown. I don't know what on earth you're talking about. My brother's died. I, I, I'm mourning. I don't know why you're talking about resurrection and life. I know you're Christ. I know that. I don't know what you're referring to outside of that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 28. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what, what we're saying here? Don't limit God. Don't limit in your circumstances that seem that it's gone and you can't do anything about it. Praise God. God is greater. Then the Bible says that she ran to find her sister Mary. Okay, and she said, Mary, the master is come. He's called for you. Praise God. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in the place where Martha met him, the sister. The Jews then, so the other people that were around, which then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up quickly, because she heard Jesus was there. So she rose up quickly and went out. They said, oh, she must be going to the grave to weep. Because they had no idea either that the Kairos time had entered into Kronos time. They had no idea that the resurrection and the life was in the city. So they thought, oh, she's gone to cry at the grave. Poor Mary. Hallelujah. Poor Mary. But little did they know the solution to Mary's grief had walked into their atmosphere. And right now, as we're sitting here, the resurrection and the life is amongst us. And he's waiting to lift situations out of your life if you would just not limit him. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and she saw him, she fell down at his feet. That was Mary's favorite position with Jesus, at his feet, worshiping him. And she said the same thing as Martha. If you had been here, my brother had not have died. Praise God. That limited faith. And we won't go into the next verses, but 
Jesus was grieved. There's a scripture that says Jesus wept. He wept because he was sad for Lazarus dying, but also sad that this lack of faith existed. Hallelujah at this time. Praise God. Verse 37. And some of them that were there said of Jesus, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused even this man, Lazarus, that he would not have died? So not only were they um, there comforting Mary and Martha, but they were mocking Jesus. Where were you? You're the one who opens the eyes of the blind. You're the one who you spit in the mud and rub it on the people's eyes and they see. So where were you? Why couldn't you let Lazarus come back to life? Praise God. Don't we do that? Don't we, we challenge God? Where were you in my circumstance? But you know something? God was there all the time. Don't you think God was where Lazarus was? Of course he was there. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's, he's all-knowing. And he's there wherever we are. God is. But God has an appointed time to do an appointed work so that the fullness of deliverance can come to pass. Praise God. Hallelujah. So from verse 38 to 40, hallelujah. Jesus then, he'd had enough. He'd had enough. Therefore groaning in himself, he came to the grave, which was a cave, and the stone lay upon it. Praise God. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Now, there's, a, there's another message in total about why Jesus says, take away the stone. Jesus could have took it himself and moved it, but he wanted them to do so. He says, take away the stone. The Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Death had come. The body was rotting. He smells. Why do you need to roll away the stone? It's too late. It's too late. That's what Martha was saying and Mary to Jesus. He's been dead four days. What are you doing? But Jesus said to her, said I not to thee, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you should see the glory of God. It's for his glory. It's for his glory, brethren. It's for his glory. Hallelujah. All things are for his glory. How many of us have situations that seem dead and gone? We no longer pray about it. We no longer fast about it. We no longer care about it. We bury it. We've given up on it even before it's been resolved. You know, we believe or feel that God can't handle it now. It's too much for God. You think to yourself, I'd never say that to God. But really, if that's what you're doing, that's really what you're saying. It's too much for God. So let's just forget about it. If only God had dealt with it whilst it was on its last legs, whilst there was a glimmer of hope. God knew what was happening. Why didn't he step in? It's too late. We categorize our problems that we bring to God. But God is saying, don't limit me. Don't be like Mary and Martha. Trust me. Hallelujah. That's the theme for the year. Trust in the Lord. Praise God. Now there's a difference between God saying it's time to move on that's different. And from me saying it's too far gone. Because there's some circumstances that we go through that really we need to leave. We need to leave it behind because it's, it's holding us back. And God comes to rescue us from it. But this is not so here in this situation. Lazarus should be alive. But Mary and Martha thought his day is too far gone. But God had a greater plan. Remember the beginning? Jesus said, this is not a sickness unto death. Praise God. And that didn't change. The circumstance was not unto death. It has not been finished. So Martha and the others were subconsciously telling Jesus, it's too far. If you had been here and before Lazarus breathed his last breath, then there was something you could have done. But as we see here, Jesus did not tell you it was for the glory of God. So verse 41 to 42 Jesus then starts to pray and it says Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank you that you have heard me and I knew that thou hearest me always I knew that you you hear me you are always there I have faith in you but because of the people which stand by I have said it that they may believe that you have sent me praise God Hallelujah. Jesus is there for us. Even right now, the Bible says that Jesus is interceding for us. Praise the Lord. And then it says, 
that when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. 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 Lazarus, come forth. You can put your own name in that. You can put that circumstance that you're going through in there. You've got a, a broken circumstance. You've got problems. You're going to tell that problem, come forth. Because the resurrection and the life is present if you just trust him in the name of Jesus. Then verse 44 and last, the Bible says, And he that was dead, he came forth. Lazarus came forth. He was bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound with a napkin. So the things that they would wrapped him with to keep him were still on him. Then Jesus said to the people, not to Lazarus, to the people, loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. You've got to do something. Loose him and let it go. But it only comes if you can just release God to do what he's got to do. Because God is bigger than your circumstance and God is greater than your situation. Praise God. Two final scriptures I leave with you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 verse 20. The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do the exceeding and the abundantly. Above all that we ask or think, according to the power that is at work within us. It is the Lord who does the exceedingly. He does exceeding and abundantly above what we can imagine, ask or think. Don't limit God because he can do the exceeding. If you're going to limit God, you're going to miss out on the exceeding and the abundantly. Challenge him. Ask him. This is my circumstance. You said that you can do the exceeding and abundantly. If you can raise Lazarus from the dead... Look at this situation, Lord. I'm trusting you. Deal with this. See what God will do with your faith. And Luke 18, verse 27, my final scripture. Praise God, which I want us all to read together. Praise God. Let's read. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Then it shall be done. If you put your trust in God... All things are possible with him and nothing is impossible with him. Praise God.